I invite your attention to the book of Acts, the 13th chapter. In Acts chapter 13, beginning in verse 49, the Bible there reads, And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, the region being Antioch of Pisidia. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. Paul and Barnabas in this particular chapter in Acts the 13th chapter were on their first missionary journey and found success in the town of Antioch in Pisidia. Uh, Paul had preached in the synagogues uh, in the synagogue of the Jews, that is where uh, he was apt to go. That is uh, often his first destination. Uh, but it turned out that it was the Gentiles in this particular city that gave Paul the most response. At one point in time, even the whole city came out to hear the word of God to be preached. But there were Jews that became very envious of Paul and the words which he spoke and the multitudes uh, that he drew, and they began to stir up trouble, and persecution had risen to such an extent that Paul and Barnabas were expelled, they were uh, cast out, deported, if you will, out of the city. But before they went any further on their journey, before they put this unpleasantness behind them, they stop, and they do a deed that we very rarely see. They shake the dust off of their feet as a symbol, as a sign against the people of that city and then continue on their travels. Shaking the dust off of your feet is a symbol of the fact that there is nothing about the people to whom was just preached the word of God that was going to stick and cleave unto you. And inherent and apparent in our theme of being renewed is the fact that there are some things that must be let go. There are some things that must cease to go on. Uh, shaking the dust off of your feet is such a sign. It is a witness to God that nothing about these people is worth saving because they have had the gospel taught unto them and they rejected it. The gospel... Tonight is open for all. Let us not mistake this fact or get this fact confused. The gospel message, the plan of salvation is open to whosoever will. And that is a very powerful message and it's one that we must keep in the forefront of our minds. But at the same time, we have to remember that the gospel is only for whosoever will. And we are told, in fact, that not everyone will. Not everyone will indeed come and accept and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And often it is the case that we're not very good at letting go. We're not good, perhaps, at moving on to preach the gospel to others because we don't want it to be said of us and we don't want to think ourselves that we gave up, perhaps, on someone who maybe over the course of time through many conversations and Bible studies and the constant pressure and uh, goading them to obey and to come to uh, meetings such as this, that perhaps over time, with just one conversation or one scripture presented to them more, that they might have obeyed the gospel. But realize this evening that there will always be people that will reject the gospel no matter how it's presented to them. And no matter who might say it, and no matter how smooth they might be with their words. The gospel, while it is a message of hope and redemption, salvation is also a message of judgment that is to come. And you cannot preach one without preaching the other. And if we do, then we're not preaching the gospel that Paul instructs us to teach. And of course, as we approach this topic, it's a difficult topic to discuss because we don't want to think about people that are without hope. We don't want to think about people who may never obey, who may never come to know the glory and the riches and the blessings that come only through God and His Son, Jesus Christ. It's particularly difficult when these might be people that we're close to, people we see on a regular basis, on a daily basis, such as at work or close friends and family members. But this evening, I'd like to present to you three reasons why shaking the dust off of our feet, whether literally or figuratively, should be something that we do more frequently 
than perhaps we do many times. Number one, I believe that shaking the dust off of your feet is part of preaching the gospel. And not that it is literally part of the gospel steps of salvation, the plan of salvation itself, but what I mean is that you cannot be preaching the gospel without in turn preaching the judgment. You cannot be saved without being lost. And there is no need to be saved if there isn't something to save you from. And if etern eternal punishment in hell isn't taught as the opposite to that of eternal life, then we aren't preaching the gospel of Christ. And somewhere along the way, and especially when you look at the denominational world and you look at preachers who preach good feelings and they preach happy things and they want you to feel good about yourself. And somewhere along the way, we have stopped preaching hell. We've stopped preaching fire and we've stopped preaching brimstone in the fact that judgment will come upon those who do not obey the gospel. Shaking the dust off of your feet is a sign that punishment is coming on those that reject the words of Christ. Now this evening, don't misunderstand me, please. I understand making people feel comfortable. And of course, this is something we need to try to do as much as possible and not be rude, to try to be understanding and empathetic and try to get where the other person is coming from when we are trying to share the gospel with others. That's what it should be. But that stops when people stop listening and when they stop receiving us because we are the servants of God. That stops when they have heard the truth, they know it, they've been shown it, and they understand what it is and still refuse to do it. We should never be eager to do so, but we have to know when they, are no, long, when they no longer have any interest in obeying the gospel. And notice what happened with Paul and Barnabas and what led them to do what they did. In Acts 13, verse 45, it says, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles." The ones to whom Paul was receiving difficulty from were ones that had heard the gospel taught before. And instead of being inquisitive or even being skeptical or defensive and prove, proving whether these things were so, they immediately went on the offensive to try to prove Paul wrong and try to blaspheme his name and furthermore the name of God. And Paul tells them that they had judged themselves unworthy of everlasting life. Paul told them what they needed to do and their hearts were hardened against it. And if we tell people what they need to do in order to have eternal life and they utterly and completely refuse it, they have judged themselves unworthy of everlasting life. And there is absolutely no hope for a person when their mind and their heart is in this state. And this is the point in time when we shake the dust off of our feet and move on. Notice what Jesus tells his disciples to say in the commission of the 70 in Luke the 10th chapter. Beginning in verse 10 it says, But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorus, and woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works uh, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. What I get from this passage is simply this. The church will always be there. The kingdom of God is nigh, and it's open, and it stands open for whosoever will. But for those that reject the gospel, God will judge. Shaking the dust off of our feet, either figuratively or literally, is part of preaching the gospel. That judgment will come for those who do not receive the words of Jesus. But hurrying along, and number two, shaking the dust off of your feet puts the responsibility where it belongs. Have you ever felt like it's a personal responsibility to try to convert someone dear and near to you? Have you ever taken it as a personal rejection or a feeling of inadequacy in your own 
faith and in your own spirituality because you try and and trying to get someone to convert, to come to a worship service, to have a Bible study, but you were never able to do so? I know I have. And that is a bad and a terrible mistake to make because we cannot make anyone obey the gospel. We cannot make anyone believe. We cannot force them to do something against their will, even as God does not force anyone to do something against their will. And that is something that each and every individual have to decide on their own. Our job is to preach and let them decide from there. As Jesus tells his disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 16, He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despises you, despises me. And he that despises me, despises him that sent me. If people reject what we say, and if we are saying the truth, and our truth and what we say can be backed by the Bible as something that is factual, and they reject it, they aren't rejecting Austin Maddox. They aren't rejecting the individual. They are indeed rejecting Christ and his words. It's not our job to make people obey. It's our job to point to the words of Jesus and show them what they must do to be saved, and if they don't accept that. We need to shake the dust off of our feet against them and realize that we didn't give up on them, but they gave up on Christ and his gospel. But finally, in number three, we need to shake the dust off of our feet because it allows us to find honest hearts elsewhere. I know of brethren that have been trying to convert the same individual, the same people, for decades with no results. They may have been to church multiple times, had all kinds of Bible studies, but still refused to obey the gospel. Does this mean we keep trying? No. Because we have to know that there comes a point in time where we have to shake off the dust of our feet against them because there are other souls that need to be saved. And realize this evening that the only thing that limits the gospel is time. The gospel is open to whosoever will, regardless of social status, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of the language you might speak, and regardless of gender. But time is not infinite. And time is not open for all. We have a finite period of time and we are wasting God's time when we keep trying to convert people that refuse to be converted. And look at what happened with Paul and Barnabas in the aftermath of this event here in Antioch. In Acts 13 verse 51, it says, But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so speak that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. If they had stayed and tried to convert those who were so clearly rejecting them, they would have neglected the opportunity to convert a multitude more. In conclusion, we have to know that it's okay to move on. That it's okay to be renewed. And that means sometimes we have to let those who reject the gospel go. Because it's actually a part of the gospel itself. It puts the responsibility where it belongs and allows us to find the honest hearts elsewhere. Thank you.